here so to get warmed up I need to play a little bit is it okay with you but I need a little help so we're gonna do this it's kind of a Latin thing there you go it's Mexico let's go stitches not too long ago, so I just changed the name of this to Salsa Suara. What does that mean? Blood. Mild Salsa. <laughs> yeah, so, so I play without this finger here, I really miss it. So anyway, yeah, I almost didn't bring the key No, we're going to do it today. We're going to do the best we can. So thank you for, uh, for the rhythm section. All right, so let me turn this off and start again. Okay. Is that a drone? All right, so this is what I love to do. I've been doing this for 45, 50 years. I don't even know. I love it. It's my life. I love music. I've always loved it. And I would not be playing today or playing anywhere if it wasn't for the fact that I'm better and I'm recovered from a lot of back pain, a lot of all kinds of pain. So that's the topic today that I wanted to talk to you about. And how about, raise your hand if you've had chronic pain or have it now and it sucks and you know about, yeah, there you go. It's usually the case, more than half of you, right? So I'm going to start my story when I was about uh, 27 years old, unhappily married. I was running around the freeways of LA at a sales job, which was a whole other story, but I didn't, I didn't do that. And I'll tell you what, when I got married, I sold my piano in the first two weeks I was married. And I didn't touch it for six years. So there was some pain right there. So how it outplay in the body is what we're going to talk about today. So I was driving to a sales presentation or something one day on the Ventura Freeway, if you know what that is. And I saw this little twinge in my back. And the next day it was there. And gradually it just started to escalate. It was. So, okay. 
So I found a chiropractor because years ago, uh, I used to run cross country in high school and I'd get these aches and pains and my mom would take me to a chiropractor and it, you know, and I'd always feel better for a little while. So I thought, okay, well, let's, let's start doing that. The thing is, it didn't really take hold this time. So life went on, eventually I got out of that marriage and things got a little bit better, but this pain was just there all the time. So I went to, I found, uh, eventually we split up, moved to a new town. Uh, I moved to uh, Fresno, California. Anybody? Yeah, I didn't think so. Really? You live in Fresno, California? Yeah, really? Okay. <laughs> but you didn't live there. Yeah, th and that's a whole story. I was there for, I think, two or three years. And so anyway, I looked up another chiropractor there, and I had that chiropractor going, but, but nothing, was, nothing was getting better. So... Life went on. Uh, I, it did help to get in the force, and uh, things started to improve. I met somebody else, and, and things really started to turn around, but this pain was still there. So, with my new partner, we eventually moved to Sedona, Arizona. Anybody from Sedona? There you go. All right. And of course, definitely things improved a little bit more because Sedona is so beautiful and everything, but this pain was still there. I would go on a hike, and I'd come home, and I'd, uh, you know, and I was limited in what I could do, and the back was just there all the time. There would be days when I was just sheet white, and my partner would look at me and go, what's going on? And I'd be in a spasm, you know, just be like, like that all the time. So uh, a friend of mine was a chiropractor, that a person I met up there was a chiropractor. Well, that's great. She gave me half off or something. So yeah, so I was running to her all the time. And yeah, worked for a day or two, okay? And then the whole journey started. It didn't work, so I started looking around. Now, if you've been to Sedona, you know everybody and their mother's a healer of some kind in Sedona. <laughs> so there was somebody on every corner waiting to help me out. So let's see, where do we start first? We had, I had one chiropractor going, then I went to another one uh, just outside of Sedona. Then a friend of mine who was getting a lot of attention in town was a rolfer. You know what rolfing is? Okay, so his explanation. And by the way, everybody had an explanation. Of course, this is their profession. So, what was the problem? Structurally, I wasn't standing properly. Too much weight on this, too much weight on that. This, that, and the other thing. And let's start to work on that, and there's your problem. So, so we start to work on that, and it did not get any better. It just, it really, really got worse, is what happened. Then I had another friend, Janice. Janice. Uh, Janice. I know, here you are. Yoga for the back. That was her deal. Like, oh, wow, sign me up for that. That's got to work. Stretch the back, do all those things. You know, you read all that about keeping your back healthy and everything. So I went to her class, and just like law, I actually felt worse after class. A lot worse. You know? Anybody relate so far? It's like it just kept hurting. It wouldn't let up. All right, where we go? Then we went to a medical doctor in Sedona, and you would not believe this one. He had me visualize, look at the red rocks, the beautiful red rocks, and send the pain into the mouth to the tune of 125 miles an hour. And I'm going, are you kidding me? But I did it because he's a doctor. It's a medic and he was a medical doctor. All right, so we did that for a while until like, I said, I can't keep forking out money this guy. I'm not getting any better. All right, so what was next? Uh, meanwhile, oh, then I met a chiropractor, Dr. Lapari. This was another chiropractor. Now his deal was, I'm so, he actually said this, I'm so glad you came to me because I'm going to this workshop in Pennsylvania and we're learning this whole new thing about how to adjust disc. And I went, oh my God, that's, that's it. They're not getting to the disc. The disc itself needs to be adjusted. Who ever heard of that? But he swore that was the new thing, and so signed me up for that. So I kept going to him. Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. This is all, by the way, out of my pocket, talking about stress, right? And uh, so his deal was, uh, yeah, I'm going to adjust the disc, and you'll start feeling much better, which I probably did for a few days. This is called the placebo, by the way. We're going to talk a little bit about it. Why am I feeling better for an hour or two? Why am I feeling better for a day or two? And then I'm not. Well, first of all, somebody's putting my, their hands on me. They're giving me attention. I'm feeling relaxed when I go in there. I know that he's going to be focused on me. And all these things help. But long term, they didn't help because they weren't addressing the problem. So we had that guy. What was next? Osteopath. Well, an osteopath is a turbocharged chiropractor, basically. So I thought, well, OK. He's a chiropractor, but he does, he does more stuff. He does extra stuff. So sign me up for that. So I went to an osteopath. Uh, I'll never forget that. 
again, I felt worse coming out, $130. And I never even went back to her. First of all, I didn't even like her. She just didn't even look at me. You know? She was just like, boom, 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 wham, bam. So that didn't work. Where are we? Three chiropractors, osteopath, yoga for the back, medical doctor, um, well-intentioned friends, you know, trying to help me here and there. All right, so one day I'm house-sitting for a friend of mine in Sedona. Now, one of the ways I get to know people better is I look at their records and I look at their books. You can find out a lot, right? So I'm looking at his bookshelf, and it was one of those Sedona moments. The, a book kind of fell out from the crowd. I think it hit the floor or something. <laughs> the name of the book was Mind Over Back. Dr. John Sarno, MD. Who's, who's heard of John Sarno? Yeah. Oh, okay. John Sarno, MD. So I go, and the book's only this big, so I go, all right, well, I'll take a, take a gander at this. It's not too bad. And I start looking at it, and he goes on and on and on. It's like, yeah, you know, rage and, your, and emotions and your personality. I'm like, yes. Did I swear at this? No, all right, never mind. I'll keep it mine. So I said, well, and I threw the book. <laughs> That's a bunch of bullshit. You know, this is real pain. This is the real thing. You know, I don't need to hear about it. it's emotional or any of that. It's stabbing pain. It's, uh, it's spasms. You know, get, you know, you know if you've had it. It's just like there's no description. It's the real thing. So I'm sitting there going, all right, and I, <laughs> I kind of walked back over the book. All right, you know, looked at it like this. You know, come, come here, get over here. And went over the dining room table, and I start reading it again. And I couldn't believe it. Once I opened my mind, just like that much, I opened my mind, I was on every page of this book. Perfectionist, high achiever, people pleaser. And he starts making this case, okay, that our personalities are actually creating a lot of this pain. Okay, and I thought, yeah, well that's interesting. So I said, but it's real pain. He, and so I read for him, he goes, yeah, it's real pain. In fact, you know, he, he calls this condition, it's called TMS, he called it, tension myositis syndrome. Tension in the muscles and the ligaments, right? And all that, which is exactly what was going on, right? The muscle, the ligaments, and the tendons. Yikes. Oh, you just hurt. And so uh, he made this case that that's, that's where all this pain is coming from. But the mechanism, it's the physical pain, but the mechanism. In fact, the physical description of what's going on. <laughs> all right? And he said, others may have to do a little counseling or something. He said, at that time, he said maybe 10% of people might need to go get some professional help. And a lot of people get better by the book. Now, that was my case, which I'm going to talk about. I did get better reading it. So I couldn't put the book down, and I couldn't stop thinking about it, because here's a guy saying, there's an answer if you'll open up your mind. And he started making a case. So how I got better is I'm going to start giving you a little bit of evidence here. This is how, this is how I started to get better. I had to recondition my thinking and start thinking about this whole thing differently. And it didn't take too much because everything else failed. I'm practically broke from paying all these doctors. I'm at my wit's end, and I'm not having too much fun because everything hurts. It sucks, all right? So he talks about a lot of things. Let's start with MRIs. Now, first of all, you got to know that Dr. Sarno is a medical doctor. 50 years at the Ruskin Institute in New York City, right? So he's, an, he's a regular doctor. Now, Dr. Sarno, though, is a really, he should have got the Nobel Prize. He's like, he about this tall. He just passed away a few years ago at 94 years old. But here's the thing. He said people aren't getting better for some reason. Here's a doctor that actually said they're not getting better, and I want to be a doctor. I want to help people get better. So why aren't people getting better? Someone, for example, would walk in, and he would do, a, like, let's say, for foot pain foot is killing him, he would do an MRI, right? And in the course of doing a full body MRI, he would look at the back, and the back had everything wrong with it. Scoliosis, pinched nerve, herniated disc, the guy was a mess, right? Had no back pain, had foot pain, that's why he's there. And then see just the opposite. Someone would come in for back pain, do the MRI, and he'd look at the back, and they were a poster child for a perfect back. Everything looked great, right? But he's in back pain. Case number one. Like, how is that possible? He talked about somebody that came to see him once. This guy worked construction all day long. Physical work, right? When he would shave in the morning, he would just get this, this, this pinched nerve. 
a spasm. Only in the morning when he shaved, looking in the mirror. Then he would go to work. It's, it's amazing, right? So how is that possible? Here's another one you guys will appreciate. How many of you have heard of ulcers lately? Yeah. Why don't we hear about ulcers anymore? All right. Here's the other question then. What were ulcers associated with? What do we all agree that ulcers did? So Dr. Sarno made the case. Now that's a physical thing, ulcer, right? Now they say bacteria, this and all that, but everybody said, yeah, forget all that, it's stress. And we agreed on it as a, as a society, as a world, right? So Dr. Sarno said, well, if you look at the statistics now of back pain, it's the highest claim of uh, workman's comp. It's, it's in the billions of dollars, back pain. So we've traded in one thing for another. He said, back pain is in vogue now. That's the word he used. I thought, well, that's interesting. It's true. Everybody has <laughs> got some kind of flipping back pain to one degree or the other, right? He says, well, that's all we've done is we've kind of switched roles. And nobody hears about ulcers anymore. So I thought, that's kind of interesting. Okay? Here's another interesting thing. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Well, I was going to start the whole talk with this finger. So what I did is I cut the finger. Now, that's called acute pain. In other words, it's 95% better. I had stitches, got the bandage. It's 95% better. That's called acute pain. If you were to take the largest bone in your body, which is your femur, snap it in half, right, put it in a cast, what, eight to ten weeks, it would be better. That's acute pain. All right, what is chronic pain? What is chronic pain? Anybody? Forever. All the flipping time. Sort of. Now, here's the thing. Here's another thing that Sarno said, and I discovered it myself. Wait a minute. How come there's good days and there's bad days? Yeah. There are days that just take me out. And there were days that I could focus and get through the day. It was a dull pain. How can, how can it waver like that? If you, if you break your femur or break your arm, there's no in and out. It hurts. It hurts until you get it fixed, right? That's the big difference between acute and chronic. Okay? So that was another, another uh, piece of evidence that, I, that started to make, make sense to me. I mean, you heard this guy called uh, Hipp Hippocrates. 400 BC, you know what he said? It's more important to know what kind of person has a disease than it is to know what kind of a disease a person has. Now check that out. In other words, the founder of modern medicine said it right at the beginning. He said, it's a person. You have to deal with them as a person. Things are going on with people. Everybody's going through something, experiencing something, and there's a direct relation to the body. You cannot separate them impossible okay now most of you know when you go to the doctor how much attention do you get from a doctor these days you know how many doctors talk to you now here's another thing this is away from the book and everything but years later in Portland Oregon I had kind of a relapse and I was looking for a, a doctor that knew Dr. Sarum and used his work and there was only one guy in Portland I called him Dr. David Clark really cool guy really cool guy and just a Imposing figures like six, seven, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's just like this is the way it is. And he said, "Look, I'm I got out of medicine." I go, "Wow." He says, "But I'm happy to talk to you. Let's meet at Starbucks." Whoa! So I go to Starbucks and we start talking, and he started telling me why and how he got out of medicine. All right. So he said one day he metaphorically decided to take off his white coat with this patient that he had that was coming in all the time. He was a gastroenterologist. You guys know what that is, basically? Okay, and he said this woman was in ER at least once a month. She was always constipated and all that stuff. He said, let's talk. They didn't ever talk to her before. She would come and he would look and he would prescribe this and that. She never got better. But he took the courage to step out of his role as a medical doctor and talk to her. Here's what she said. She said, when I was a child, no, let's take a look at her profile. Here's her profile, by the way. This is what Sarno outlined. Her profile, she's an attorney, beautiful family, four kids, all the money in the world, everything on the outside perfect, constipated all the time, okay? You know, ER once a month, okay? So she said, when I was seven years old, my father molested me. And he threatened my brother if I ever said anything. She said, I have never told him my whole life, I'm telling you now. Amazing. Well, guess what? What do you think happened? 
she got better for sure, and he said, that's it. I'm not going to play this role anymore. And now what Dr. David Clark does, I love this guy, because he has the credentials, and he's a medical doctor, he's going around the world, and he's speaking to doctors. Doctors, we have to pay attention to people as people. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And another quick story, I had a relapse a few years ago. Now, here, oh, here's the, yeah, it's the deck. Now, here's the thing that I discovered most about this pain. I call it the timeline. This isn't in the book or anything. I, I coined this phrase. When I would get uh, this back pain, which is off the charts, I'd always go to the timeline. What just happened? What is going on? And always, without fail, there was something. Two years ago, three years ago, something like that, uh, I was in Oregon, I had this relapse. Some heavy duty family stuff. Alright? Now I had built this shrine. I lived at, uh, I lived at the Ananda Center and, uh, outside of Portland, Oregon. And this really cool project I got, I got to build a Jesus shrine. So I built all the bricks and I did all this really cool stuff on this hilltop. And all by myself, all the bricks and everything. Okay? Now the property sold couple years later and everything had to go, we had to actually take down the shrine. I picked up one brick, turned to put it in the car, and oh my god, one brick. Now how is that possible if I built the thing myself and it never bothered me? But two days later, there was some heavy hit and stuff, I won't go into that whole story, and it just made so much sense. That's exactly what happened. These motions just went down in here, it hurt my heart, it hurt my body, it hurt my feelings, everything and it came out of my back, okay? Now here's the beauty of this whole thing that I want to, and the point that I want to make today. What took 15 years to get rid of originally, now with this information I had, that pain was gone, and that one, and it took about a week or two. I actually had to go to ER and get some pain pills. That was a really heavy deal. But I'll be honest, I just had some back pain two days ago. Two days ago. It's like, oh. Now that would have taken me out, but it's gone, it's gone today. Because I went right to the timeline. I'm starting a new business. I've got a lot of things going on. Now, here's the thing. It's not the bad stressors. It's both. It's bad stressors and good stressors. Dr. Sarno has a top ten list. What are the things that stress us out? Well, a lot of people are worried about our mortality. That's a big one, right? So we have that. Family stuff is huge. It's huge. Family stuff. Right? Family interactions, right? Uh, of course, our job. You know, all these things affect us. Even the good things. How many of you have ever been to a Thanksgiving dinner and just walked out there going, thank God that's over? <laughs> now, by the way, that falls into the people-pleasing category, which Sarno said is that's a heavy-duty category. Okay? So here's what he said. This pain is it's like a repressed rage. And what are we repressing? We're repressing us, are the real us. Now, one of the tenets in Ayurvedic medicine, if you ever know anything about Ayurvedic medicine, they say that the main cause of all illness is because man is wearing a mask. He's, wear, he's, he's walking around with this persona that's not him. And Sarno, in, in a modern terminology, was kind of saying the same thing. We are so enraged. Like this woman. Everything on the outside was perfect. Everybody at work thought just, she's just wonderful. And she's seething inside. She can't even use the bathroom. Okay? So that's what's happening, is we have this rage going on. This rage comes from, he said, uh, abandonment, and, and what my interpretation of that is original abandonment, our, our disconnection from spirit, actually. So what we do early on when we feel abandoned is we people please, because the worst thing in the world is rejection, the feeling of rejection, right? So I'm going to please you, I'm going to please my wife. Oh, what? Six years. I told you, I sold my piano in two years. You know what I did? I got her business started. I financed everything she wanted to find. Everything for her. I got a sales job because she said uh, she said businessmen are the kings of the world. Ah, forget this music stuff. So I went into sales, made a little money. So what? It was miserable, you know. So that's what's going on beneath all this. Is we have these these issues and we're trying to please people. It's a persona, and secretly we don't want to hold up this persona. It's too heavy. It's just not us. It's not who we are. So what happens? The back. And we're not trained to talk about that, especially men. What do men do? We're at the water cooler at work, and the guy's back is killing him or his knee. So what's he talking about? He goes, you know, that football injury 20 years ago when I got tackled on the, you know, well, 
pain from 20 years ago does not come back. Once it's healed, it's healed. But that man cannot talk about the fact that maybe his wife doesn't love him anymore, they're talking about a divorce, or his children are giving him a hard time, because most men aren't trained to talk like that. So where, where does that go? It goes on his back, goes on his neck, goes on his shoulders, all these things. Which brings me to the next thing. Sarnos calls this the symptom imperative. Now this one is amazing. Once I got a handle on the back thing, and I, and I, and I said, and like he said, knowledge is the penicillin. If you can accept this information, you can get better. So let me complete that part of the story. I got better. My thing was six weeks. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was on a hike in Sedona with some friends, which normally kind of wiped me out. I get home, oh, I smell it, and I got home, and I wasn't even thinking about it. Hours later, I go, whoa, <laughs> look at my back. Whoa, my back does not hurt. And I went on a big hike. Now, how is that possible? And that was it. It was gone for like 20 years. 20 years. And then a few other things happened. My knees caught on fire. There was one point where my, my partner had to usher me into the car so I could go teach my classes. My knees were just killing me. But what he said is, sometimes the pain will move around. Because the pain has a job. And the job of the chronic pain is so that you don't get to your emotions. You don't talk about it. It's like hiding it. Because we're not comfortable expressing our emotions. <clears throat> Most people rather talk about their pain, their physical pain than their emotions any day of the week. Can you relate to that? Anybody? Yeah, it's just easier. You get in groups and what are people talking about? Oh yeah, this and I took that and I did this and I did that. Yeah, but how's your life going? Oh, children give me a hard time. I don't want to do it here. I don't want to live on heat. I don't want to go to and it's all these things, right? So that's what happened. Now one day. Again, this timeline is very important. I had just uh, split up with my partner. Now I had joint custody of my daughter. We had just moved to Portland. I didn't know anybody. I was broke. There were no gigs. I'm like, oh my God. And I got this pain in my jaw that went off the charts. I could barely talk. I remember going to God, hey, if this is it, then let's go. I'm checking out. I didn't know what to do. But I remember. He said, this could pop up anywhere. Anywhere there's a tendon or a ligament or muscle. Right here, we have our tendons in our jaw, right? And so I went, wow. Well, what's going on? Well, all this stuff is bothering me. Poverty, I got joint custody of a child, and I got to take care of her. All these things were bothering me. And guess what? <laughs> it went away. <laughs> now, here's what's interesting. I do consulting on this. I help people out. I had calls from all over the world. I had this woman from uh, Quebec or something like that. She had the jaw thing. So we started talking about it. I said, well, what's going on? You know, maybe it's your life. <laughs> well, I've got the bar exam in two, she's 26 years old. I got the bar exam. We just, I just got engaged. We're gonna get married. And we're moving from Toronto to Ottawa. Oh, there's a few things that might be bothering your job. So, yeah, but I don't know. And anyway, we didn't, we, we had a session. And then she called me back a couple weeks later. She said, you know, I just went to the dentist anyway. Blah, blah, blah. He wanted to give her a seven thousand dollar thing that was going to help her job. She said, I didn't do it, and guess what? I have that, that pain is gone. All right? So that timeline is very important. I just, all I said to her is, look at your life. You, you, that's a lot of stuff. Bar exam, that's heavy duty. Getting married, that's pretty heavy. Moving to a new town, you don't know, that's pretty heavy. So you see how important it is. There's always an emotion tied to it. So I trained myself to do that, to go to the emotion of what's going on. And I talked to this parent, I I know who you are. You know, I know who you are. You're covering up the fact that I'm feeling insecure right now, I'm feeling in fear, or any of these things. And they're usually tied to an emotion like that. So how we, you're not holding up anything. Is it 10? 10 more until, <laughs> you guys get to ask questions. So, uh, okay. Mm. So those are some of the things. Let me see if I want to cover all this uh, evidence here. Thing. Check out this quote. This, I love quotes. I love quotes. Um, this woman is the chief surgeon, head of, head of surgery in a hospital in Alabama. What's her name? Nell Durant. Check this quote out. I hate to tell you, she says, but surgery may be the biggest placebo of them all. She makes her living doing it. She's the head of the department. But you know what she sees over and over and over again? And I'll testify to this. 
She sees people that are getting better because they've invested so much money and so much emotion, it better work. And the power of the mind will make it work. My father-in-law, seven operations on the back of that. I'm sitting there going, well, hang on a second. Why didn't the first three or four at least work? Now, his personality, 20 years, first <coughs> sergeant in the Army. Don't tell me what to do, right? So he's not, not opening emotions, give me a break. Seven operations. He passed away a few years ago. Hold the stone, you know, when it came to that. So isn't that amazing? So when things like, like when I go backwards now and I look at the chiropractors that did work and the few things that did work momentarily, I realize, oh, that was a, chiro that was a, a, that was a placebo. Like Sarno says in the book, it was, it's just the fact that we're getting touched, we're getting paid attention to. The chiropractor spent more time with me than any medical doctor ever did. How's your day? How's it going? How are your kids? What kind of doctor does that? Right away. You know? And let me give you another example of the body-mind guy I went to, um, well, when this last episode I had. And I thought, this guy, his name is Emmett Miller. He is the eminent body-mind guy. Back in the 60s, way before anybody who was into this. He's a medical doctor, but he changed roads. All right? He's a, again, he's almost seven feet tall. This guy is huge. And he's just like, oh. So when I went to see him in uh, Grass, uh, Nevada City, California, eight-hour drive from where I was, and I couldn't find him. I'm looking in this mall and all that. Finally, my GPS, I ended up way up on the hills, pine trees and mountains, and that's where his office is. So, wow, this is interesting. So I go in. He has me sit in a chair over here, and he sits in the chair. No intake, no nothing. So what's going on? And at that time, some stuff going on, and all he did is he said, you have some high voltage stuff going on. Get on the floor. And we, we go, where is she? Meditation. And we go into this meditation. He said, you have to take, you have to cool down your mind. You have to get, rid of, get the charge down. First thing. Okay? And then he made a tape for me. He made a meditation tape for me, and he gave me a suggestion of one of his tapes that he made, like a guy that, that was it. 400 bucks. Eight-hour drive in each direction, but but it worked because he was he was gentle. He just had this authority about him that you know what you have these issues, and that's what's causing your pain. You see that? Lay it down, cool off. No prescription, no intake, no blood pressure, none, none of that stuff. And, and all the degrees in the world on the water, it's all there. <laughs> but he made up his mind long ago that to embrace this way of, of treating people. Thank God. One other one, one other one, and then I'll, I'll get into that. Uh, in my own life, I remember I had this gig once. I used to do these piano workshops. I'd go to uh, 65 cities I'd been to doing these things, usually driving. Uh, usually they have a piano, but this one they didn't, and so I had to drive from Ashland, Oregon, to Farmington, New Mexico, and teach a three-hour workshop that night. So that's an 11-hour drive, and then teach that night. And the night, that whole week, my back was just like, and I had a friend. He lived 20 minutes closer to the freeway than I did. I said, John, I'm going to stay at your house, and at least it'll knock 20 minutes off the 11-hour drive. My back is killing me. And I'm just, John, just taking ibuprofen like, like M&M's, you know. Like, uh, and I go, what? how is this going? And then the old programming, the chiropractor. Well, you know, the lumbar, boy, if that's not supported, and those long drives, that just kills your back and all that chatter. But on the other hand, I had this information to counter this. That's not true. That's not necessarily true at all. It's some emotions and stuff like that. Check it out. I get to the gig, 11 hours, through the most beautiful... How many of you are in New, about New Mexico? I love New Mexico. Oh, you know, you could drive for half an hour and not see a car. So it was one of those things. The mace is not just so peaceful and serene. And I get there, and as I'm unloading my piano to get ready now to teach all night, uh, I'm unloading the piano. It was the same thing like when I went on the hike. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. There was no pain. Wait a minute. Okay, timeline. So if I look at the timeline, well, I had a beautiful, relaxing drive through the desert. I'm going to do this work that I love. I love doing this work, just teaching this class, music, right? And I'm making money. And I'm making some money. Wow, it's like the Holy Trinity. <laughs> 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 the money, having a good time, wonderful drive. And I get there, I'm feeling great, and a wonderful drive back home, and the back pain was gone. So how, I'm just, how does this happen? So in my own life, and the reason I'm standing here talking about this today is these things happen. And I, I just told somebody that this is the second best thing that ever happened in my life. My first, have, have my child, of course, you know, if you have kids. That's it. This was the second one. Because 
it's like, wow, we, I did not have to keep suffering. I did not have to keep going to these people. I did not have to go through this guesswork all the time and this fear and this stress. Dr. Sarno laid it out. Some of his clients, by the way, Howard Stern, uh, Larry David. You talk about Larry David's a perfect personality for, T, for TMS. Because who is Larry David? He's George Costanza. He's a, he's a nervous wreck. He's uptight about everything. He's got poor self-image. He's the people that have back pains. You know, and Sarno said it over and over. It's not the alcoholic laying in the gutter that has pain. It's just high achievers. We're trying to get ourselves established in life. We're, you know, we have a lot of responsibility. We're type A's. You know, these are the people who get the back pain, the neck pain, the shoulder pain, all this stuff. So, so that's my case for it. And I've got a lot more stories, but it's just amazing. Now, the few people that I've turned on to this that have had success, just even more joy. I have one friend who says, Don, that's it. I'm buying you a brand new car. He oh. still hasn't. He still hasn't got me a car yet. He was an engineer. He had back pain. I told him about all the stuff and some of the resources I used and start getting better. One day he, he uh, got called. He was an engineer. He got called in the office by his boss. And, uh, Shit, I always get these headaches every time I go in there. He says, yeah. and he, sure enough, he had a meeting with her. He came out and he said, oh, wow, I hate her. And I hate my job. He always wanted to be a writer. And that was it. His, his pain went away. Years of doing stupid meetings and this job he hated. I mean, here's another example. I, there's a million, but I like this one. Sarno talked about, what's the biggie? Carpal tunnel. Oh, you play too much piano, you're typing. Too. But that's not true. It's not true necessarily. Because you talk to people that have carpal tunnel. One lady, uh, I type away eight hours a day and, and in this office where there's no windows and I have to do this eight hours a day. And, I'd really rather be doing something else. Well, you think that might have some, just, I'm just saying, some impact on why your wrist turns? Come on, you know? So, tying up these loose ends. Pain doesn't just happen. We're not, this is another thing that Sarno said, and I'm gonna shut up and we'll get on with the question. The back is the strongest part of your body. Now, I was trained it was the weakest. My chiropractor, how many of you heard this? You have to sleep on a bed that's, you know, really, after I read this book, I slept. I could have slept on a bed of nails. It wouldn't matter. Okay. Uh, when I first went to a chiropractor, he said that your whole problem is your your hips are like this. I mean, oh, you're yes. that one. You need to wear a lift. Yes. And I was so afraid every time I left, if I forgot the lift, yeah. that my back would hurt. And it always did, right? But think about it. if you're walking on the beach and the ocean, <coughs> how straight are your hips? Or you're going on a hike? Come on. So. Again, that doesn't make any sense to me at all, right? So, that didn't make any sense. So, these things are more and more and more to set in. I had to practice them, I had to reread them. And like he said, if you can accept this as your reality, you will get better. Jesus said that. What did Jesus say? I love Jesus. He used to go, he would always ask somebody, do you want to be healed? Because without your permission, and a lot of people want to hang on to it. They have what, what's called secondary gain. We're getting some kind of benefit out of pain. I don't know what it is. Attention or money or something. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to wrap. All right, so we're going to go to some questions here for the last few minutes, uh, and then we'll call it a day. How do I? Okay, one, two, come here. Okay, great. So if you have a question, raise your hand. I'll come and give you the mic. Okay. Um, we'll start off with, well, we'll start off with the closest. <laughs> So where do I get your book? Oh, <laughs> was that it? Okay, so I highly. Am I still on? Yeah. yeah. I highly recommend anything from Sarno. The book I read at the beginning was called uh, Mind Over Back, as I mentioned to you. Then he wrote several other books. A really good one is called The Body Mind Prescription by Dr. Sarno. How do you spell his name? S A R N O. John oh. Sarno. Again, he passed away, but his work's amazing. But. To me, man, this is the Bible. You can see. I had to have a rebound and everything. Because here's a guy named Steve Hosanich, and he gives the, all the credit in this whole book and everything he went through to Dr. Sarno. So it's, it's a tribute to Dr. Sarno. It's his teaching, it's everything. But I love Steve. I've done three or four sessions with him, Zoom sessions with him. He's funny, he's amazing. And he's a layman, he's not a doctor like me, I'm not a doctor, but his story is amazing and the things he says in here tie up, all of Sarno's stuff, tie it up in a 
really interesting, fun, fact-filled, well-researched way. Highly recommend The Great Pain Deception. The Great Pain Deception. Faulty medical advice is making us worse. That's the subtitle. Believe it or not. So yeah, I highly recommend Where is she? Get this book. Yeah, get this book. Get this book. And, and also, real quick, there's a thing that he has on YouTube called the TMS Wall of Victory. Now, these are all people that have worked with him and the Sorrow Principles that have gotten better. And they're short. They're about 10 minutes. And their stories will blow you away. But one guy's on there, 80 years old, had pain forever, gone. And what they have to say about And what they discovered about themselves, that's the main thing. The journey of self-discovery. And done with pain. All right, go down. I can totally buy into the emotional stuff, but what if you actually had a broken back and that resulted in scoliosis? Does he address that kind of physical well, issue? Well, again, if, you're bro if your back is broken, how many of you heard of Joe Dispenza? Yeah, well, check his story out. Fractured back. <laughs> that means little fragments are floating around his back. And the guy never went to a doctor. Read his story. Anyway, so that would be, that could be an acute thing. If you literally broke a bone, yeah, you, you fuse it, set it, that should heal. Now here's another thing. Chronic pain piggybacks on acute pain sometimes. We'll have something and then it doesn't heal. And so the, the TMS goes, ah, perfect. I'm not going to get better and fake them out. I'm going to have all these emotions, but they'll still think it's this, you know. So definitely, if it doesn't heal up, that's what I'm saying. If it doesn't heal after a reasonable amount of time, I can practically guarantee then that you have this, this symptom, this syndrome. Look at your emotions. Look at what's going on in your life. I have another question here. Probably a short one. Uh, I used to be a hairstylist, and I started having corporate tunnel it's because of bending the wrist. Maybe. I had a dentist call me. She, th she said the same thing. My neck, I think it's from looking like this, you know, all day. No, yeah, my, but when we start talking. My, 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 my fingers start getting numb. Right. So I just start doing hair, and that was my remedy. What did you, what did you do? I just start doing hair. You were happier. Yeah. Were you happier? But it's not, a, it was not emotional. You just start doing hair, though. It's easier. You let yourself, you got off your own back, that's what happened. <laughs> okay, yep. You got off your back. All right, another question here? Yeah. Um, I have questions about people who actually do have physical pain. In 2008, I broke a hip. Yeah. In 2011, a large woman jumped up from a moving bus and broke one. Yeah. And I had them both replaced. Then I was in a car accident, and I had four vertebrae. Back. Yeah, and they've all been surgically put together again. Yeah, and I'm in chronic pain; it never stops. Well, this is well, that. By the way, exactly what he said is all over this book and all of Sarno's stuff. That should be you should be better according to modern medicine. But you've done everything right. So many times people don't get better. In fact, they get worse after surgeries. A lot of times, you know, because there's stuff underneath all that. Again. The body left alone will heal itself if it's acute. If it doesn't, you got emotional stuff going on to look at. Look at your life. You have... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think what you're saying is really interesting, and I agree with most of it. Um, but I've got a problem. <clears throat> and that has to do with what somebody back here was just saying in my own case, too. Some things are broken, and they remain broken. And... They heal, but then they still have chronic pain. My legs were crushed 30 years ago. The pain never changes. Now, you're absolutely right about secondary stuff. I mean, I develop all headaches, back and forth. You're 100% with you on that. But the reality is, crushed bones are crushed bones, and they're going to keep on hurting. And part of what bothers me about what you're saying now, I worked in this field for many years. I was an acupuncturist, and I treated a lot of people with pain. Part of the problem is, although you don't quite say it, there's an implication that if you don't get better, it's your fault. That's true. And I have, that's one of the things that drove me out of a large part of, of, of my work and did into another specialty, which is blaming the patient for not getting better. I have the answer. The answer is do this, that, and the other thing. If you don't do better, it's because you didn't do the, the, my program well enough. 
And I'm not saying, you're not doing saying that explicitly, but it feels implicit in a lot of what you're saying. Some things are broken, they're going to keep on hurting. Doesn't matter. Now, you, I can change my reaction to it. How I react to the pain in my legs is very different from the pain in my legs. I can hang on to it and make it misery and that kind of stuff. But the reality is, legs hurt. Ain't going to change. And that's not my fault. That's the fault of nerves in the legs and how they respond. So, I have just a question. I'm not saying you're doing it, but you're kind of implying. Well, again, this is all up to you and what you want to do with the information. So, I'll just put a, ask you then, what, what why were my, my knees were on fire to the point of I couldn't walk, it hurt like more than anything in the world, of course, and it got better. Once this figure was driving me crazy, oh yeah, you have arthritis. Well, I don't, it's fine now. How's that happen? A car crushed both of my bones. Again, I'll just say this, memories hurt. A lot of times we store these memories in our, our bodies and if we don't deal with them, they're there. I have stuff 30 years ago. How many of you have stuff? Your parents, your kids, it still hurts. Their memories hurt. The body is connected to the mind. No, the bones hurt. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm not here to argue with you, but I'm here to, I'm here to tell my story. I'm not a doctor, you know that. Uh, just a, yes, go ahead. Just a quick one. Uh, how does this work with the idea that pain is just telling your body, your body telling you something? Oh, absolutely. Well, oh, let me, okay, let me do this real quick. Um, I can hardly see this. Hang on, let me read. This is, this is right out of the book right here, and uh, exactly. So he says things you start, you know, to start getting you pres a prescription to get better. You need to stay away from groups, organizations, books, and people who talk about symptoms. And I found this so true, okay? Talking about symptoms enforces imagery that gets deeper embedded in the subconscious. Talk about life. You steal the need for the symptom when you talk about life. The guy at the water cooler, how you doing? My heart's broken, my wife's leaving, my kid sucks. But instead of, wow, you know, a football injury from 20 years ago. Yeah, okay. So that's one of the things. Uh, there's a whole list of things to get you better, to get you think, to start feeling better. And then once you start feeling better in the smallest way, it starts to pyramid. Does it, so it, it no, totally goes hand in hand with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. One what more. I like to say is, uh, what helped me tremendously was a sign that I saw in the re a restaurant, a Thai restaurant. It was Buddhist philosophy. You suffer less when you learn how to suffer. Oh. And I was always you know, thinking, what, what does that mean, what does it mean? But I, I've had this chronic pain for a while now, my neck, uh, from neuropathy. I, I went into the hospital for a heart problem, and I came, they didn't know what it is, now I have this at the hospital. But I always had this fear, I'm burning like you, my knees, my ankles, my wrists, my neck burning. And I have a fear about it. Oh my God, what's, once I drop the fear, like saying, okay, it's going to be all right. It's going to go away. Uh, it, it got much better. So fear also can exacerbate whatever pain you're having. And not to forget about, there are wonderful creams like Arnica and Caliandra, all this Really, when you put this on, it really helps a lot. But I agree with what you're saying, but not wholeheartedly like this gentleman. Emotions definitely exacerbate any kind of pain you have. But I know my pain is physically based. I saw my MRIs. Between the, di yeah, two people I know could have the same back, one person can have an awful MRI, has no pain, and the other person has not a bad MRI and has worse pain than the guy with the bad MRI. But uh, to say there's no physical component, 
is not is 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 uh, ignoring a truth. Well, all I can say is I ignored it and I got dead. That's why I'm standing here saying this. I ignored it. The hardest thing to do is like I have not ever been on heroin, but I can assume it's pretty hard to kick to kick. And he said, if you can stop going to people and stop going to these groups and stop taking things, you will get better. And I said, well, hell. This was me, and I'm only talking about me. Well, no, it doesn't, but a lot of people don't. It's all belief. It's what you believe. Well, you know, what did Jesus say? As, as you, it's done unto you as you believe. I don't know if you're into Jesus or any spiritual stuff, but even Yogananda said, mind is the power that creates the body. Hold the thought that all bodily states are changeable and curable and that the consciousness of anything being chronic is a delusion. You are the masters, the moments of your life. Paramahansa Yogananda. So, I gotta go. Our, um, can I make a quick... Uh, anyway, I have cards back here if you'd like to get in touch with me here, be on my mailing list, please. Uh, just fill out a card with your email on it. If you'd like a consultation, just put a little note there and I'll send you a link. How, how you can do that, we can do a Zoom thing. Oh, we have one more question. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I, I tend to agree with a lot of the mind-body connection. Yeah. But uh, as we get older, whether we like it or not, Mother Nature is sending us signals and that includes using our joints millions of times over a lifetime. And you get osteoarthritis where many of the soft ligaments are wearing out and is bone to bone contact in many joints and stuff. I don't think you can fix that depends just with you, the mind. Depends on what you focus on. Who's, who's the oldest guy to climb Mount Everest? I Google this stuff because to me, when I focus on those exceptions, I go, wow, that's possible for anybody. Guy climbs Mount Everest at 80 years, climbed at 70, at 75, and then at 80, okay? And all those things. So, yeah, that might be true if you put your belief behind it, think about it, and, and worry about it and go into fear about it. Absolutely true. But the opposite's true. Pull your attention away from it. How many, how many of you, you know, remember looking at your grandparents and going, oh my God, 45, my God. Look, where we're, look how we're living now. 45, that's nothing. People running around, running. My, my Uncle Lara running marathon until he was 85 years old. And you'd look at him, he was glimmering his eyes, he was so excited about life all the time. So it depends on what you're looking at. What's the example that you're looking at and focusing on? Again, this is what all spiritual teachers say. Here's a model. Look at it, don't look at it. It's up to you. Very good. Yeah. Thank you very much.